Hello everyone and welcome to a speed talk about cost synchronization. This is going to be covering work done as a PhD proposal by Rui Fun. Apologies if I mispronounced that. And it is a level bound on cost synchronization, specifically gradient cost synchronization. For some motivation, Consider synchronizing a computer's time with the internet. You've probably done that, I'm sure. Suppose you have ping up to for a second. Then there's a second one interval of uncertainty around the time it receives a response. Around the accepting could easily force the computer's clock to be off by the full second. This problem won't be given by either. For a more sci fi example, it's speculated in that future planetary exploration, say Mars, may be accomplished by swarms of autonomous robots. None will have access to a trusted time source because it's Mars. Tasks such as repairs, however, will still require some degree of synchrony. This example should convey the essence of the hot synchronization problem. Which asks the following Given an asynchronous network of automata with potentially faulty hearts, how well can the automata agree on a uniform logical time? Now, the views we've developed about asynchronous networks won't be sufficient to handle this because there's this built in notion of real time, also, we've certainly Assign real time values, it's just more involved. Each process has a hardware hack, for example, which is updating continuously, and then is used to compute a logical hack, which will hold the consensus estimate of real time. There are also some unusual notational conventions. The uncertainty, for example, in the time for a message to be delivered is the distance between two nodes, not the length of time, but the uncertainty. Similarly, the difference between two nodes, logical clocks, is the skew between those two nodes. To get an idea for this, let's look at the simple earlier result. This result was considered in the following scenario. But there are n processes in a complete communication network. All communication channels are reliable. All processes are distant, absent, and approach. And all hardware hearts increase at the rate of real time. Then we get the following nice result, which says we can get a skew below epsilon times the line, 1 minus 1 over n. Now, this is a bit of an a overly idealist the scenario that would probably never happen, but it's interesting because it develops this technique called shifting in image and initial execution is chosen. The hardware hacks of some processes are shifted. The message lies are changed to no process sees a difference. And then the processes still compute the same logical times. However, the run shifted and up the shift further ahead. Now, our computer example from before is actually a fairly good scenario where this applies because the system part on the computer probably does update at real time, thus we never gain accuracy beyond half a second, most likely. Now, this previous result didn't define a formal model for hearts, but we need one, and it's called a timed input output automata, or TIRA, and this is basically just a measure input output automata that runs in combination with trajectories, which map an interval into the set of states. Where this interval time is called the duration, and we write it this way, an execution 
is just a combination of actions and and, uh, and trajectories. So trajectory action, trajectory action, and so on. Now, we'll find it helpful to generalize the concept of executions, given the set of actions A and state powers B, and A, B sequence, and our phrases of reason of operating, actors and trajectories, given different uh, sets of actions, and state variables, the restriction of our A, B sequence is the choice of any sequence with no longer bar. Any actions thrown out, trajectories projected, and any isolated trajectories concatenated. When A prime and B prime correspond to a T IRA, is actions and variables we write off a restricted to C. Now, finally, we're going to find a few notational conveniences. Given A, B, sequence alpha, we write all of alpha for times. With V is in V, we write V alpha T for V as value at time T. If sigma occurs in A B sequence, that's the case action. Then we write T alpha sigma for the sum, which is the time at which sigma occurs. Now, consider one T N, or some T resemble from before. It will actually provide this example for all of this because. We can add with the server S, which is a very simple automata, which is one variable H in real time, and one action send M. And the uh, time could be represented by a similar automata with one local variable L for the local time, and one action receive M. And then we have the sample execution, in which H is always one up to T. Then the time when the send occurs. Now, the communication network is a bit different than usual because it's a way to direct a template graph. For any two vertices, we write DIJ for the weight of the edge and we assume that DIJ equals DJ. Now, assuming that the minimal edge weight is 1, we call vertices connected by section edge neighbors. Well, each edge associates a channel atomic that is reliable but not necessarily like PFO. And finally, you see, from the channel atomic associated with an edge, we'll deliver a message with uncertainty at most the weight of the edge. So the weight will be the distance when we add clock atomic to each node. Now, clock atomic. It's just a TIRA with a continuous state variable H representing the hardware hash and the corresponding variable LR for the logical hash. We're also going to require that the hardware hash stay within the bound row of 1, or rather its derivative stay within the bound row. We're going to write this as order HI and call this the hardware hash weight. Finally, we're going to assume in that any actions do not modify the hardware hack and that in any trajectory, only the hardware hack may change. Now, we're going to do two last steps. We're going to throw out the possibility of trivial algorithms by requiring that the skew increase at a rate greater than or equal to half. We're also going to require Remember that there will be a gradient property, and this simply means that for some f, the skew between into two uh, nodes is bounded by f of the distance between those nodes. We don't show what f is, but we're going to prove some properties about it. Yeah. Now, in review, so we do need to define one minor mathematical note. If x is greater than equal to 1, y greater than 0, and y is divided with x, then we write e of x equals y. This is very slowly growing. e of 4, 2, e of 3, 7, 3, and e of 2, 56 is 4. Now we can probably see, and to be result, 
which is that there is a constant signal such that for any sufficiently large t, there is a rat g which I am root d minus 1, such that for any odd synchronization, f is an a over g, satisfying the f gradient property for g between 1 and d minus 1, f of g is greater than or equal to signal up g times the quantity 1 plus all in base e of quad of d of d minus 1 over g. Now, that was all I just wrote you. Basically, it means it's more deadly. It's simple and you with respect to little g. You know, with respect to big g. It's really slowly increasing. To prove this, we need to build a series of elements to construct an execution for any algorithm A satisfying the F raising property. It ensures a spin. In all cases, we'll fix the problem. We're going to be working a long graph with the distance is equal to the absolute value of the, between the vertices. A is going to be some arbitrary if I have a trusting resistor algorithm, so that's why the F gradient property, and where it's going to be that universal factor to dealing with the cross bridge. Now, the first result we need is the add skew letter, which basically says that if we have an interval, Whose height is partitioned by row J and I, right such as the following hold, namely in the second half, all messages have delay between the minimum and maximum, exactly halfway between, and for any new J time T after the second half, the clock leaves when, then you can be short with so slightly shorter, but execution beta, in which the clock rate has been increased a bit, and the message choice are a bit more variable, and the skew has been increased. Intuitively, you can show this group with a special case of d equals 2 by something very similar to shifting. Namely, we speed up the session process and tweak the delays to make it appear the same. Now, it may be tempting to use add skew repeatedly to get nodes with constantly increasing skew. Fortunately, we can't do this directly. We call an execution flexible. If the hardware half reads a message two or three times, or far away from the extremes, add skew requires the greatest flexibility, and it doesn't need such a sequence. To get around this, we need another armor called the bounded increase. Now, the bounded increase armor states that if we have an execution alpha of a branch greater than one of a row, and with the same flexibility conditions as the beta from add skew, then alpha cannot have its logical clock increasing at a rate greater than 116f of 1. Now, the proof of this is basically by contradiction. Since alpha is flexible, we can distort it so that it runs an age faster. And that should increase its logical time at the end by 2f of 1, but because it was flexible, the logical cost of its neighbors would have changed. Thus, in at least one execution, in its skew was one of its neighbors, whereas at least f of 1, a contradiction. Now, we can put these together into what we call the inductive. Add skew lemma, which states that given two nodes I j, if they have the same conditions as in bear, when they increase and they have, have a skew equal to big j, lemma, then we can set this number eta, such that where well, it is an integer, and then there's a new axis you can offer, again with the same three conditions, and there's a um, I prime mean J per I'm between I and J such that we increase 
to all the feud between neighbors, between high pumps and pub. Now, this means that we can improve this. Basically, but I extended alpha and using a two and bounded increase to get a work bound on the changing skill. Uh, since we're really this integer, we'll be get this rather ugly bound. And upon the add two armor to our first attack data press, the extend trick. We have to do a situation alpha prime, from which we get this bound, and substituting in the value of eta, we specify the as a condition. Now, by repeated application of reductive bad skew, this means we can increase the average skew between neighbors in a smaller and smaller range. So we're going to let D in the original range. C1 equals the 3A for F1 everywhere, K for or the root of this log, and D prime equals D C1 to the J. And then we get this last term, codifying the he repeated use of inductive adds Q. Basically, as long as we have, have those regular flexibility conditions, then we can get some respect by some which underlying to that increasing interval. We can now skip the proof when the heat increase of time and finally put things to that through. Writing regular k for big k, we get at this inequality here. And for d equals 1, we can solve here f for foreign bonds to big k to e log big d. Since c is equal to 3, e for f1 over row. See, one when it is also with an actor and just substitute back it to the original widget the this uh well you is a call hope you enjoyed that and the power is I went to a good time.